All right. How's everybody doing? I uh, hope this is better. Uh, still getting new, you know, still new to uh, doing the live videos. I was trying to do it on Google Meet and um, and and get it. Uh, you know, we kind of have a meeting format. So I'm going to jump right on in. Uh, like I said, a pleasure to be here for those of you that's been joining the group uh, over the course of the last week. And definitely appreciate you because you do not have to do that. You do not have to do that. So definitely grateful for having you. Again, my name is Eddie Hamilton, uh, head boys basketball coach at Airline High School in Bossier City, Louisiana. I'm starting year 18 in the profession. Uh, this is this is the coaches sanctuary that is presenting the coaches huddle. And so what this is, like I said, I help uh, build programs. I help coaches build athletic programs uh, to be successful off the court, off the court. Um, you know, so that that's uh, what my expertise is. That's what I've spent my career doing, learning how to uh, to build programs with the things that that are uh, pretty much from from another perspective, not just from X's and O's, but from the things that we don't get taught uh, after court. So. So I'm going to just uh, jump right in. Like I said, I don't really know how this goes on the live video. So if uh, if I if I can get some help, I can. I see I have some viewers. I'm not able to see comments and things like that. So that's something I got to, you know, got to get used to. I got to get used to that. Um, I guess if somebody can send me a text or something to tell me how I can get interactive and be able to uh, communicate. Uh, with everybody uh, from this live video all right so yeah all right then so we are setting the foundation uh, for our program that's what we're focusing on tonight setting the foundation uh, for our program whatever sport that is of course uh, I, I do basketball but this is open for any sport we're jumping right into a new school year so we're all trying to get prepared and so I'm going to jump right in. Uh, so what I have developed over time is what I call a program builder outline. That's what I have developed over time, a program builder outline. And what it does is it helps me to, uh, to stay focused on what it is that I'm trying to accomplish, you know, as a coach with our program and the needs of our players and to have, uh, to help build an identity uh, for our team. So, you know, program build outline. We're going to set the foundation. Uh, definitely want to help out with that. Like I said, if somebody can text me and let me know how to get back on the page where I can see comments, man, I, I, I need the help so I can be able to interact with you. I definitely want to interact with you. Um, so I don't want to press the wrong button on here. So, so y'all help me out a little bit. I'm open. I'm always looking to learn. All right. So, First, we want to start out, we always say this as a cliche, but we really don't know what it means sometimes, but our vision is what we want to start out with. We want to start out with a clear cut vision of what we want our programs to look like. And it's very, very important that we have that. Okay. If I throw a little Bible in, it says without, you know, a, a vision, my people perish. You know what I'm saying? So what happens is your program will perish. Your program will fall for anything and anybody who comes in with any ideas that do not align with your vision. Okay? You got to know who you are. You got to know exactly what it is that you're trying to accomplish as a head coach uh, going into your season. So your vision it should define who I am and what is success. Okay? Your vision should define who I am. So who are you as a coach? Who are you? What do you value? What's considered to be important to you? What do you want your program to look like? It's not enough to just say, hey, we want to win titles. It's not enough. You got to have a definition of who you are. Me, I know over the course of the years of my career, what's been developed is this understanding that, yes, I want to win games. Yes, I want to win district championships. Yes, I want to be a state champion, and I believe that's going to happen before my tenure ends. But the one thing that I know is, is that my role as a man is that I'm helping to develop husbands and fathers to these boys. I know that's what I'm doing. I have no doubt that's what I'm doing. And then along with that, when it comes down to the basketball side of it, it is 
those that are going to play at the next level that they are emotionally ready not just their skill that they're emotionally prepared to be ready for the next level uh, of, of playing college basketball if that's what they do next so for everybody else is developing husbands and fathers okay that's something our world does not have enough of that's what I know I am that's what I'm doing when I am coaching I am helping my boys my old pastor Pastor Richard Stampley now in Natchez, Louisiana, Shekinah Glory Ministries. He said, God created men to make our best decisions under pressure. That's what we were made to do. So with that, that helps to define what I do as a leader. I am helping boys become men by having high pressure situations on a consistent basis and helping them to learn how to make the best decisions. So that's me. That's what defines me. So when I'm coaching games, I'm not coaching just x's and o's i'm coaching character because when we work on things on a day-to-day -day basis i'm looking at your decision making while you're out there in the game and why are you making decisions that we did not work on that's a character flaw so i understand that's what defines coach eddie hamilton that's me and what is success now next is your overall program during your tenure what overall when you're done coaching, then people can say you did as a great job. Okay? People, how they define you. What do they say about you when that program is over with? Okay? When you're done and you pass it on to somebody else, you got to have an idea. You got to you gotta know what it is that you want for people to, to know when they see a, a program coached by you. Okay? And that is during the tenure of your coaching career or your coaching uh, tenure at one job because I know when these days people that I stay in places 30 years or more people are moving around and that's okay right for those that are on I appreciate you being on like I said I'm not able to interact a whole lot because the way I got it set up I don't know how to see the comments so y'all help me out if somebody know how and you on here send me a text message all right all right so also after what do you want your overall program to look like during your tenure the next thing is what are our goals for this season what do we want our team to look like this year? What is going to be success for us during this season? Okay, so you want to have, well, how do you define success over your tenure? Okay, is it just going to be, I did a horrible job if I didn't win in the state championships? Or are you going to be able to see, hey, maybe I was you know, a district runner up, a district champion consistently every year? Or if it's not that, hey, I'm a program, their kids are graduating, they're going to college. Um, they're, they're finishing up, uh, they're finishing up with, uh, with school, you know, these different things and going on and, and having families. You got to know what that is. And then what is success this season? Is it state championship? Is it district championship? You know, is it getting to the quarterfinals? Uh, is it last year we won seven games this year we won 14 games because what happens is when you know what you're looking to do then you can appreciate, okay, the journey that you're on. So, because because you know what you what success is gonna be for you, or if you set a goal and then go past that. So, if you if you know if you mess around and say, hey, we want to be one of the top three teams in our district, but then you mess around and win a district championship, where well, you you superseded that that's success. Or hey, we want to get we want to get to the playoffs this year, but if you go past that, hey, then it's success. So you got to know that because that's going to help your mindset as a leader on the highs and lows of a season because there are a lot of highs and lows. And that's the thing. You don't want to be emotionally all over the place because you got to know what your vision is. You got to know who you are and you got to know what is success for your team. OK, so hope that's helping you out. The next thing is, is that you want to define what kind of coach do I want to be? What kind of coach do I want to be? Uh, last week, I was presented with the question, what makes a great coach? All right. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you four different types of coaches. Okay. It might be more, but this is what I've learned over my time. Okay. So I got to define what kind of coach that I want to be. But along with that, I got to know where I am right now. Okay. And sometimes within these four categories, you probably can wind up being all four at different points. 
but you have to know what kind of coach you want to be and it cannot be defined by anybody else you got to know your strengths and weaknesses okay so the four levels of coaching the four different types of coaching so you have guys that are, are great motivators okay I mean, I don't care what group they have, who they have, who they're coaching, they know how to motivate. They can take a group of guys and have them to believe that they can fly, that they can run through a brick wall. You know, that is a gift that everybody does not have. Sometimes it is hard to find a way to motivate your, your players, but that is something that is very, very powerful, and you have to know that that's your strength, okay? You have developmental coaches, all right? You have guys that can do a really good job in taking players from A to B to C to D and then understanding what their pace is because that's something that we sometimes we look by. Some people need to have a lot of talent, you know, in order for them to feel like they're being successful. That's not a bad thing, okay? It's just got to understand your, 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 your strength. But a developmental person is a person that can see any player, okay? And then you understand where they are and then you want to put them on a, on a path where you can see consistent growth in that player from one point to the next, okay? Next, you have recruiters. Some guys know how to get players, okay? Whatever cost that is, because everybody's different. Like I said, because they're different phases. Because people say, well, he a bad coach, he a good coach. Well, how you know? How does he keep getting all these good players? Something about him is good. So there's a recruiter. So you have... Um, what do we start off with? Uh, lost motivators. All right. You have developmental coaches. All right. Then you have recruiters. And then you have the X and O guy. Sometimes you have coaches, man, they might not be able to develop or motivate, but if they're in the right situation, depending on who their players are, man, they can take a group of guys. Understand this guy can shoot. This guy can't. This guy finish around the rim. You know, this guy can do... They take those guys and they can paint a beautiful, beautiful picture, okay, with a group that might not even look that talented, but they know how to utilize all the weapons, okay? So that's a strength. So what kind of coach do you want to be? And those are four levels of coaches that are out there, okay? So you have recruiters, motivators, X and O guys, and developmental. So you need to know what kind of coach you want to be. What are your priorities every single day? What is it that when you come into practice, when you sit down and make your practice plan, what are you prioritizing? Because when you do that, when you communicate that on a day-to-day -day basis, that's how you're starting to really build your program, to define your program, to define what y'all are going to look like, who you are, how you're going to play, what you're going to look like on a consistent basis. You know, that, that is what, what are your priorities? What are you, and there's so many different things to go down a list of and prioritizing. For me, I'm looking at attitude. Attitude for me. Attitude, effort. Attitude, effort. Attitude, effort. Man, that's a priority for me because that shows me what, what kind of character you have. Because the bottom line, we all have issues. We all have problems. Marriage kids, bills, uh, teachers, girlfriends, mamas, all kind of stuff going on. But when I step on that court, I'm looking for the right attitude and the right attitude produces the right effort. And that's the thing that I prioritize. So what are your priorities? Okay. After that, this will dictate my daily decision making. So I, I understand what kind of coach I want to be. I know what I want to prioritize. But it's going to dictate, okay, my daily decision making. Oh, you know, people always say you got to begin with the end in mind, right? Okay. Got to begin with the end in mind. Right. So with that being said, we say it, but truly when you start walking it out every single day, then you got to understand my decisions every day that I make is going to be based on my priorities. It's going to be based on the kind of coach I want to be. It's going to be based on what I consider to be success. It's going to be based on who I am as a person. Okay? And that's got to be a consistent, consistent thing. And sometimes we get caught up in the moment. Sometimes we'll make, hey, I, look, man, I, I, got, I got a player before 
man, that I, I, I thought it was a play of my dreams. And I bent and turned and bent and turned and bent and turned, but it didn't fit my priorities. It didn't fit my vision. It didn't fit, you know, the things that I considered to be important. And eventually we had to have that conversation. And that was a choice that, that that player had to make. He had to make a choice because I did. I bent over to try to make it work for him. You understand what I'm saying? That's what I did. So I was wrong overall because it affected the rest of the team. I had to apologize to my team for the decision that I made. Okay? But we still wound up having a great, great season because we took care of a situation, you know, that was a little bit uncomfortable. But the bottom line is, is that you got to be able to have your decisions every single day that you make based on your priorities and what kind of coach you want to be. All right? We almost done here. Next, what are the expectations of my players? All right? What do I expect from my players? Okay? That's, that's very, very important on a day-to-day -day basis. That even though that sounds similar to some other things, we still have to understand what are the expectations that you have you know, for your players. And only you can define that. People in the stands can't understand that. You're in practice with those kids every single day. Every day. You know what they can and cannot do. And so sometimes the, the sideline coaches, you know, all the people on the side, everybody that got something to say, when they come to a game, they don't understand what you had to do during the course of that week to make sure that that player or those players understood what was expected of them okay and what they proved to you that they can and cannot do that's the part sometimes that people don't understand in a, in certain settings kids play a certain way and that's one of the things that for me i picked that out real quick you got some players that play well in the blowout games you got some players that play play better in the hard fault games you got to figure out who it is. So for me, my expectations is character, okay? I'm looking at their character based on their approach every single day, all right? Of course, I got I to gotta judge their talent. I got to look at their level of talent, okay? Because you got to have talent to play a sport. I don't know why people think they can just get anybody to play. You got to have talent. I mean, God dog, you know, Zion Williamson is a freak of nature. <laughs> That's super talent, you know? And then they got to find out what kind of player he is along with that talent. Then performance. Now it's performance-based, meaning whether it's game or practice. So now for me, I'm looking at the expectations that I have for my guys as we go through the course of a season. And I'm going to tell you all how I do it. Okay, before, and let, me, let me not go too fast. Performance, okay, in games, for, for performance in practice. Sometimes, you know, people say, well, that kid's a gamer. Okay. That's cool, okay? But I got to see some things in practice that let me know that I can trust that this gamer can be consistent. Because sometimes gamers don't show up when somebody punch them in the mouth. So that's, 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 the, that's the experience I've had. Sometimes those gamers, when, it's time, when, it's get, when you get punched in the mouth, they're not showing up, okay? And lastly, when the expectation is growth. Am I giving my players clear, cut, you know, with their expectations that we have, showing them where they are and then what they need to grow and during the course of the season, seeing that growth. So the thing with that is, this is how I do it. So this is a basketball analogy. We, we typically have 30 plus games. I was taught this by an old coach. And basically what it said was, break the season up into thirds. The first eight to 10 games of the season, what you're doing is, is trying to establish yourself. You're trying to see who's who, who plays well together in certain situations because sometimes you can't learn it in practice. Sometimes you got to look in the games and see what's really going on and then what I think they should be doing. Some stuff is being executed in practice because they're not scared of, of their teammates. But in the games, some are not functioning well in the games because they're afraid of their opponent. So I got to figure that out on the character end of things. Y'all see what I'm saying? So I'm learning that at the beginning of the season. So that's why I like to schedule hard early. Got to schedule hard because I know if I want to make a playoff run, I got to play against some teams that's going to challenge me early and I'm going to see who's going to show up and who's not because now I'm learning. The second uh, third, 
now what's happening is, is now we're establishing chemistry. Now from the first third, we kind of figure out who plays well with each other in certain situations. You see what I'm saying? Now what we're doing is in the second, uh, the second eight to 10 games of the season, when you're getting into 14 to 16 games, uh, going to almost close to 20. Now what you're doing is, is now you're developing chemistry and consistency. Your practices can start to get a little bit smoother now because you know who's who and who works well in different situations, okay? And then when you get to the final third of the, of the season, which is mostly district and league play, now what you're doing is you should be a well-oiled machine. Everybody on the team should know exactly what's expected of them by the time you get to that point. When you get the district, at that time, that last third, when you get ready for the playoffs, now you know their character, you know their talent, you know their performance, and you've seen how they've grown or not, okay? So with that, what we're doing is we're trying to, we're trying to, you know, set the tone, okay? We're trying to see this now ahead of time and knowing what we want to look like when it's crunch time and it takes the course of the season to do that. So you got to make sure that the expectations are clear based on their character, the talent, the performance, and their growth, okay? Now you want to define uh, where I want to go with my goals and objectives, okay? Where do we want to go with our goals and objectives? The truth is, you can say, okay, we start with the end in mind. Okay, I want to be a state champion, or I want to be a district champion, or we want to get to the quarterfinals, or whatever that is. Or it's just, hey, we want to win more games than we did last year. We won seven games last year. We want to get to, like for me, my first year at airline was a COVID year. Got in. We knew that we were starting from scratch. We had limited you know, resources at the time, just trying to make it work. And we had, I think we had like 10 games canceled that year. We had three quarantines. So it was really tough. So really the goal that year was, man, we're trying to get through this season healthy. Just healthy. That's what we were trying to do and try to play as well as we can and win the games we can win while establishing who we are. We wound up 5-13, and 13, okay? 5-13 and 13, my first year at Airline. Well, now COVID starts to loosen up a little bit. Now we get to play a little more summer ball. You know, now we get to use the summer to to develop, you know, you know, get in the weight room, do our conditioning because the, the COVID protocols are going down. So now I'm saying, hey, we're playing for a district championship. You know, now we're, we're, we are we have some some realistic goals here that we want to get to. And now we know what steps we can take and I don't have to skip any steps and look at these different things that's going on because some of the COVID protocols were kind of leaning and everything. And I was trying to, you know, define, define the character of the program. So where do I want to go with my goals and objectives? Define where I want to go with my goals and objectives. That's personally and professionally, okay? Personally, when I told some of my story last week, and I'll share more of that as time goes on, for me, I want to be the best man I can be. That's what I want. And that's in the dark too. I want to be the best man. That's personally. Okay. And my, with my goal, every single day, I want to be the best man I can be. The best example I can be. Does that mean we're perfect? No, it does not. But it does mean learn from our mistakes in front of our kids. Okay. So for me, guys, I apologize if I do something wrong. I apologize if I made a bad decision. I'm very, very transparent and open with my team because that's a part of developing trust and developing respect and letting them know I'm human as well. Yes, I'm hard on you, but it's because I want you to be the best you can be. Understanding right now that personally, I got to be because if I'm not the best man I can be personally, if those kids find out I'm a liar, that what I'm trying to get them to do, I can't do, if that happens, it's over with. When your players find out you're a liar and you're trying to get them to, I think that was what was loving, loving basketball. When um, I forgot the boy name on the movie, Omar Epps played, the, played on the movie and, and uh, he was upset with his father when he found out he was cheating. He said, like, why is it that you spent all this time trying to make me a man that you couldn't be? That's a legitimate statement. That's some legitimate trauma as well. 
So you sit there trying to get them to do something, do something, do something, do something, and then they find out you can't do it. And we're not talking about playing a game. We're talking about our character. So I got to define where I want to go. So me, I want to be the best man I can be. I want to honor God with my life. I want people to know that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior by the decisions that I make on, on a day to day to basis. And then professionally, okay, professionally for me, mirrors personally. Sometimes people have different, you know, goals when it comes down personally and professionally. For me, it's the same. I want people to know that my word means something, okay? I want to let it rely on me, all right? And I'm going to show up and do the absolute best job I can do on a day-to-day -day basis. That's, that's, that's all for me. So when it comes down to it, it's not, I want five state championships. I want to send 100 kids uh, to college to play uh, basketball. Man, that's, I can't, I can't control that. But what I can do is going back to what I said before, I know that in our world, we don't have enough husbands and fathers. Straight up. We just don't. Because as coaches, you all see a lot of single kids, kids with single parent homes. Y'all see it. All the time. So our world could be just that much of a better place if you think about if, if the child had an opportunity. If I can get a guy to say, hey, I want to get married and have a family and be committed to it. That right there, that's easier to obtain than being a professional athlete. Because everybody's not going to do it. Everybody's not going to college to play basketball or play football or baseball. That's not happening. That's the truth. That's not saying kill the dream. Me, I know if I develop your character... If you got the talent, you're going to go to college and stay in school. How many of us have seen kids going to school and, and dropping out? Why? Because their character was not developed while they were in junior high and high school. And that's just the truth. That's no, that's no knock at anybody. It's just the truth. Whether they denied it, whether you were trying to do it, and they just fought against it. Well, I mean, you know, that's one thing. But ultimately, I want to be the same person at home and on my job. Now, do I get it right all the time? No, my wife will tell you. I mean, I'm getting, I get corrected all the time. <laughs> and that's okay. But ultimately, my heart's considered to be in the right place. A couple more things and we're going to get you out of here. I sure appreciate y'all being on. Uh, I'm definitely enjoying just sharing these things with you. I hope it's something being said uh, that's definitely being a blessing to you, something that you can add uh, to yourself. And uh, the last section is, is plan of action. Okay, so you want to make sure you got a vision. Okay, you want to have a vision, you define who you are, what is success, define what kind of coach you want to be, what are your expectations of your players, define where you want to go with your goals, okay, and lastly, you got to have a plan of action, okay, so what I'm doing now at this time of the year, you know, because like I said, I take July, I do nothing, that's me, I do nothing, I watch videos and things like that and clips and call other coaches and things, you know, and and try to you know stay fresh on developing myself but ultimately now i'm not looking at the season yet because i gotta be fresh so now these first couple of days coming back now what i'm doing is is i'm initiating the plan of action i'm writing things down i'm looking at the calendar and i've been doing this now this is year 18 so really it's kind of smooth right now but ultimately your plan of action in order to develop okay or set the tone for your program setting the foundation for your season the plan of action you know this, it takes a community to galvanize or stimulate your plans. Now, what that community look like, you determine that. Community does not mean that everybody that lives in the school district is going to back you up. That's not what that means. Okay? So we want to make sure that we understand that. All right? So you got to define community. For me, I keep it as simple as my players. My players are my community. Okay? Those are the ones who I, who I make sure that are all on the same page. After that, I worry about administration and teachers and all those different things kind of like that. But the main thing is, is the players. All right. I got to make sure that that community understands the game plan for how and the, and the plan of action that we're going to have to accomplish what we want to accomplish. And what happens is, y'all, is that it starts to get sticky. It starts to resonate. People start to see how serious we are based on the work. OK. And then lastly, your plan of action must be flexible and evolving. It's got to be something. I have the same documents that I've had now for the, probably the last 16 years, 16, 17 years, and it's just developed over time. Okay? Okay? So 
that's the thing you want to do have your vision and you want to have a plan of action and know and we will go into those details on the plan of action okay moving forward when we come back so now our lives that we're going to have here we're going to do the the, the, the coaches huddle on thursday evenings okay at 7 p.m is when we're going to do those i did this tonight because last night i played piano at my church and we had a function last night all right so we stayed out we was out late so on thursday evenings are the nights we want to do these lives that we want to share and uh and i'm going to figure out a way so we can become more interactive okay i really love to become more interactive and be able to communicate um so i'm learning the technology stuff so y'all pray for your boy all right so uh that's a, your, your first episode there of the Coach's Huddle, uh, presented by the Coach's Sanctuary. Thank y'all for coming in. If you feel like this is something that's being a help to you, share it out with other coaches. Share the page out. You know, it is a private page, so I have to approve, you know, those that come in because we want this to be exclusive to our to coaches because I want to have some real live conversations with everybody, okay? So, I'm going, like I said, I'm going into, into year 18. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to see some things over my career and uh, I just feel like it's my time to be a blessing. So I love you all. Thank you all for logging in. Uh, like I said, share this uh, this group with other coaches. Tell them, come on in, and I'm going to do, do my best to try to share uh, as much uh, valuable information as possible so we can all continue to grow and we all can be good to these kids, be blessed, be a blessing to these kids, all right, because they need us, all right? They need us. They don't need us just to worry about sports. They need us to worry about them, all right? I love y'all, man. Enjoy, enjoy your weekend.